Good evening, everybody. Um, I am David Defoe, and this is Denise Defoe, the first lady of Mo the interim first lady at uh, Mount Olivet Seventh Adventist Church. Go on, Denise. Go on, introduce yourself to everybody. Go on. Hi, everyone. I'm Denise. Um, it is a pleasure to join you all tonight. I look forward to learning and talking with you this evening. All right. All right. So just before we begin, this just, just a little text that I want to share with you all. We're going to have a little devotion. And then what I'll do is um, I'll bring in um, uh, 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 Rob and Jennifer Eugene and then also uh, Kenny and Lorraine Watkins. And we're going to have a discussion sort of after we get through uh, some things that we're going to talk about this evening. Right. So real quick, there's a scripture of text or a scripture text that I love. Um, it's found in the book of First Peter, First Peter, the third chapter in verse seven. It says this, right? And I highlighted some stuff in red because I wanted to make people upset. And so this is the portions that I highlighted in red. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives, treat your wives with, what does that say? Understanding. Understanding. I got a reader tonight. And as you live <laughs> together, she may be what than you? Just read that. What does it say? It's the Bible. It's in the Bible. She may be weaker than you are, okay. but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should so that your prayers will not be hindered. Mm. That's, that's deep. Verse eight says this. Finally, all of you should be of one mind, mm -hmm. sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be what? Tender hearted. That's both of us, you know. Correct. Tender hearted. Like, be, treat, treat me, love exactly. me tender oh, okay. and keep a humble attitude, right? And then the text says, don't repay evil for evil. Mm. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Man, Denise, this text is speaking to. <laughs> is this text saying anything to you tonight, in Denise? Instead. Yeah, instead, pay them back with a what? Blessing. Yeah, my a, Lord. a blessing. My Lord. All right. So that's First Peter three seven. I love this text, um, and we're gonna just walk through it really quick because I think it's it it shares some interesting things, um, a value that we may be able to get um, from it. And I wore this Mickey Mouse shirt. Um, this is from my favorite vacation. This Denise and Dana actually invited me on one of their trips to Disney World. I, I went on one of them. <laughs> um, they invited me one time, um, and this is the shirt that she forced me to wear to go to Disney World that year. Right. Um, but but the text is the text is very exciting, and I want to share uh, just a little bit of it with you. Um, uh, the, the Bible says the Bible says clearly, right? In the same way, give honor to your wives, treat your wife with understanding. Now we won't talk about the thing that weaker than you. That is just about that is just about strength. That's not talking about intelligence. That's not talking about emotional stuff. That's just saying, look. Um, uh, the Bible is saying uh, pretty much your wife may not be able to uh, 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 lift as much as you're able to lift. That's that's all that text is saying, right? So I don't want us to get hung up sort of on on that. But then the Bible says um, that you all need to treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. One of the one of the things that I first see in the text is that it's important for us to understand that uh, Denise, marital discord is a threat to unity with God. The Bible says literally, if you and your husband or you and your wife, you're not getting along, uh, the Bible says if you all can't work that thing out, uh, that the Bible says your prayers even will, your, your prayers even will be uh, uh, hindered, hindered before God. And, and that's, that, that's, that, that's amazing to me um, that God sees a man and a wife as one. Right. He views you as one. And so when there's disequilibrium, when someone is not, uh, when someone, when a husband and wife are not on one accord per se, the Bible says even that it's so dangerous for marital unity that our prayers could even be hindered uh, before God. I, I don't want to stick on that, right? Um, the, the, the next part of the text, the Bible says this, the Bible says this, and Denise, you can jump in anytime you want, all right? Uh, it says, finally, all of you should be of one mind sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tenderhearted uh, uh, and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil and don't retaliate with insults. When people insult you, instead pay them back with a blessing. So I, I, sort, of, I sort of love this because a lot of people think that in marriage, there's something that there's a, in marriage, especially when we 
deal with communication and conflict, people think that, what, I sense something you got to say. People sense sometimes that uh, if I win an argument, then mm -hmm. that means that you lose. No. Um, like there's no pyrrhic victories. Like we, no one gets, no one wins when someone is losing. Now, I sense something bubbling. I can like feel your No, heat. there's nothing. You have nothing? No. I want to stay, I want to talk about that last sentence. What's that? No, what is it? What is it? What's the Instead, last sentence? Instead, pay them back with a blessing. Okay. What do you think? What do you think? Let's talk about that. Why? Talk about what? Like what? What? What blessing? What? Yeah. What the blessing is? It's right. easy to stay mad, to be mad, and to stay mad. Sure. And the sure. reality of the situation is, how do you how do you how do you change that? Dating, the, relationship, engaged, married. How do you change it? The key is how is it that we bless our spouse? How it is? Okay. How is it that we communicate love? We communicate understanding. We communicate that um, you know even if you do something wrong to me, okay, right? Um, the Bible teaches us if, if someone smacks you on this side of your face, then say, "Oh, please smack me on the next side." You turn the other cheek, right? Okay. Um, it's the same. It's the same principle in in this. So if you're in, if you feel insulted, if I re respond to you with an insult, then what happens? It goes back to the law of first response, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you say, David, pick your socks up off the floor, which happens very often, Every right? Every day. Every day. Okay. All right. So I don't understand. What, okay. So if you tell me, pick my socks up off the floor every single day, okay. right? And I come back and say, well, you know what? Denise, pick your drawers up. Wait a right? minute. So if you tell me, pick up my socks, and I come back and tell you about what you're not doing, then that's how conflict starts to begin, right? Yes. Okay. So how do we solve that? The law of first response says um, it's not the first person who starts a conversation, but it's the first person that responds in a conversation that sets the tone for the conversation. Okay. So when you say, David, go on. David. Pick your socks up, please. I don't say, well, pick your drawers up. I say, yes, Denise, I'm going to pick my socks up. I'm sorry that my socks being on the floor offends you so much. This is just an example. This, this is just an example. It never oh. happens. <laughs> All right. So that, that's what the text is saying when the text says, um, when the text says, I'll put it one more time, when the text says instead pay them back with a blessing. It's important for us to understand that we have to be one-minded in marriage. We have to be moving in the same direction. Uh, the Bible says, can two walk together except they um, be agreed? And, and so tonight, we have two other couples from uh, Mount Olivet that we want to bring on, and we just want to have a discussion uh, with them as it relates to what are the some of the things that we uh, what's in that cup? What are some of the things that we uh, need to do in order to stay together, in order to deal with the challenges that we're having during this time of quarantine, during this time of uh, of isolation, of physical distancing? What are some of the things that um, that we can do, and so I want to, and I want to invite on to the, uh, I want to invite on to the stream, um, uh, 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 I want to invite on to the stream, uh, Robert and, and Jennifer Eugene, and then also Kenny and Lorraine Watkins. It's good to have you all. Uh, uh, introduce, introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about yourselves um, uh, uh, when you do get a chance. Yeah, Kenny Lorraine. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Kenny Lorraine Watkins, we're uh, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and we've been married for uh, 25 years. Uh, Lorraine couldn't resist me, so she had to marry me. So oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> speak to that, man. Speak to that. Uh, what, what do you mean she couldn't resist you? Tell me, tell me what that means. Well, it, it's, it's amazing how we met. We were a blind date uh, uh, oh, wow. 25 years ago. You know, a blind date. Uh, met, uh, some of our friends that tried to get us together on many, many occasions. Matter of fact, five different friends at different times that did not know each other tried to get us together. And it took about two and a half years. She finally, uh, I was invited down. I was working in you know, corporate America and I was invited back down here to church. And uh, I thought I was going over to another friend's house, but I ended up going over to Lorraine's house. And uh, she tried to keep me in. She locked the doors and wouldn't let me out. So. That's how we got hooked up, and uh, it's, been, it's been a blessing ever since. <laughs> uh, uh, Lorraine, you have a, you have something contrary to what uh, the good elder is saying. Now, don't call him a liar. The Bible says don't insult your husband. Now. Dr. Defoe, we had a disclaimer before we had this call this week, and we said, mean that we all are locked in, you have to make sure not to create any challenges on these calls because we all still have to stay locked in. So, okay. <laughs> 
Kenny is just, um, you know, <laughs> talk is free and it is what it is. Um, but we got married. We met one year and we got married the following year. And um, oh. you know, Kenny kept chasing. So, you know, I oh, just so you said, couldn't okay. resist him. You couldn't resist him. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> yeah. And we've been fortunate because uh, Lorraine and I work together at home, home base. We work home. So we're together all the time working together. And God has blessed us with a, a you know, we have a give and take. Uh, Lorraine has definitely, definitely given talents and I do. And we learn how to mesh those talents with the strengths and weakness together. It's, it's been working very well over the years. Now, now we're going to come back to that, right? We're going to come back to that because we, th you all telling us that you all live together, you all work together, y'all always at home with each other. You find each other that irresistible that y'all can't leave each other alone. So we're going to come back and we're going to talk about that because I want to hear how you all survive because for some of us, we in this house with our spouses together and uh, yeah, it's it's rough going, man. Like I, I don't tell her, right? But sometimes I get sick and tired of every five minutes. Can I get a hug? Yo, no, man. I just hugged you five minutes ago. Let you know, give a brother some space. All right. So, all right. Well, thank thank you, uh, Kenny and Lorraine, for uh, introducing yourselves. Uh, uh, Rob and Jennifer, just tell us a little bit about you, uh, if you don't mind. Absolutely. All right. Um, Rob and Jennifer Eugene. Uh, we've been married this year. 12 years, can't forget. Um, if I do, I'd be in trouble because our anniversary is the day before my birthday. So I'd be in a lot of trouble if I forget. <laughs> um, I like to remind her every single day that she got to check off the amazing box okay. when it came to husbands. Um, matter of fact, I remind her she got to check off all the boxes. So and I created the boxes when he married me, so it's okay that he now gets to check off the boxes because oh. I created the template that he needed to be able to check off for himself. So pretty much, you tell him what to do. Is that what you're saying? Um, I keep her happy. I keep her. Happy. Yeah. Listen, listen. I, I know I've told you this many a times in private and also in our meetings. Uh, Rob, Rob's our minister of music. At Mount Olivet, um, I tell you this all the time: you're going straight to heaven, man. Um, because you, you know, you just going to heaven. Man. You, you got. It's okay though. It's okay. But no, no. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for that, uh, Jennifer. You want to talk a little bit more about yourself? Uh, we yeah, met tell us in what you... college, uh -huh. so we've actually been together like about twenty years now. Yeah. Oh wow. So oh, wow. we've been married twelve, but together for twenty. Minus a six month blip when he hit it, fell and hit his head. But other than that, you know, we've been together all of that time. <laughs> and, all right. Uh, and Pastor, to, to answer your question about heaven, I'm already in heaven. Oh. So. See that? <laughs> what? <laughs> you see, oh, I'm impressed, right? Oh, we need to in. Oh, <laughs> you just trying not to get beat up tonight. All right. So we're going to move on. We're going to move on with our conversation. And um, we're going to talk about a little, we're going to talk about a few things, um, some principles that we have. Uh, for for marriage, and we just want to hear what it is that you all have to say. How it is that you encourage um, those people who are married, those people who are seriously dating, those people um, who are engaged. We're not just talking about marriage tonight. Um, uh, so, Denise, I'll let you take over. Okay. So, some of the things that we highlighted as far as relationships are concerned um, is highlighting communication. So, communication is key. Um, there are a lot of barriers to communication. Um, a lot of times, uh, I know when you're planning uh, wedding showers, you're planning your wedding. People have a lot of advice for couples. You know, you need to do this, you need to do that, make sure you, whatever. But people don't talk about the nitty gritty of what marriage really consists of, what is important in marriage. And sometimes we learn behaviors that were shown to us growing up. And so communication that we saw in our home comes with us into our marriage. And so sometimes those are poor habits. Sometimes those are good things. So we want to talk about the importance of communication um, what are some barriers to communication within your marriages? Or what have you found? Is, is communication a challenge within you all's marriage? Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it really is. It, it's communication is a, a big challenge and it's, it takes time to really uh, listen. I know I thought I was listening to Lorraine getting married, but I really didn't listen because I would always just keep talking and talking uh, with, and not listening to what she was really saying, understanding what she was saying. So mm -hmm. it, takes, it really is a challenge to to sit and listen because we think we do. I mean, I mm -hmm. thought I was really listening and understood her and knew what was going on, but I really didn't because 
you know, different personalities and it takes yeah. time to get to a person. You think you know them, but you have to live with them to really know them. And that you still, you, you learn as you go along. So exactly. yeah, I thought I was really listening, but no. And I had to really sit back and, and it's hard. It's really hard to sit back and just say, brace yourself. And, and she says something, I'm, you know, you're ready to go at it and, and respond, but it's not the time to respond. You had to keep listening because she has so much going on and understand that you really have to take some time to develop in it. It takes practice. It takes time because that's not us as men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I just want to say, um, Denise, that's a great question. And I'm so happy that Kenny mentioned, you know, gave that answer. That was the right answer. Um, but this is my first time hearing, you know, that um, that I've been right. OK. Well, I didn't say she was right, but again, we're working. She's working on it. I, I, I heard that. I heard that you were right all the time. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Yeah, it's a, it's communication, you know, communication. And we hear think, things differently too. Yeah, I think it's it's about our language. I mean, it's the like the love languages, as you hear from um, books that have been written. It's mm-hmm. it's about do you all speak the same language? And we found out that we were not even speaking in the same continent sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took us time to learn how to be able to talk to each other, what to talk about and when to talk about it. Um, because we are so different in personality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that it, and it's, 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 it, it, you have to just kind of, you have to be patient with it. You yeah. have to be patient with each other. You have to be patient with yourself. Mm-hmm. And you have to try to learn how to not keep falling in the same pitfalls of arguments, mm-hmm. um, you know, jumping to conclusions, jumping and screaming about the same thing all the time and or starting with one conversation and mm-hmm. then talking about five other things that aren't in regards to that conversation. So it was kind of learning how each mm-hmm. other talks Mm-hmm. to be able to understand where the other one's coming from. Yeah. Um, like he, when we first got married, one of the things, like if I came to him and I was upset about something and I'm talking about it, I just want to vent about it. Mm-hmm. But he wanted to talk over me to solve the problem. And I'm like, I don't need you to talk. I need you to shut up and listen. Mm-hmm. It's just so that I can get it out. Like that was just what I needed from him. Mm-hmm. And it, and then it would turn into an argument. And mm-hmm. then it, he finally realize I, I don't want you to fix it. I know that's your nature to try to want to fix things for me. Mm-hmm. But this is a time when the way you fix it is just to let me get it off my chest. Right, right. And I think everyone kind of hit on a good point is that um, when, you, when you're first dating, when you're first married or engaged or whatever, um, you think you know the person, you think you're communicating well. One thing that that when we were in premarital counseling is they said, well, communication may be, may be difficult for you guys going going forward. And so you guys need to work on finding that way to, to communicate with each other clearly, get your point across, not to get offended, not to be too. And so that is something that we've worked on throughout our marriage with him doing therapy. One thing that I've learned over the years is that- What do you mean me doing therapy? Like Conducting. Oh, okay. Know. I just want everybody to know I- I mean, yeah. you could use. I know we all could use therapy. But yeah. go on, go on. Con- I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm Thank listening. you. That would be As you communicate. As I was saying, um, with him doing therapy, um, certain uh, conducting therapy uh, different days of the week, by the time his day is over, he is completely drained. He's heard so many things. He's talked. He's just, he has emptied himself. And so then I come and I'm ready to talk. I'm ready. To, How's your day? How's this? Da, 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 da. And he's like, I'm tired. I've just given so much out and heard so much that I had to learn. Okay, I have to give him a little bit of time to decompress. And it was just, it's a learning thing. Every single day, every single year, we've been married now. How long? So we have, um, we, have years. Okay. we have some new, yeah, we've been, it's not 12 years, 12 years? <laughs> you know, listen, when, when you're having fun, time flies. So it feels like 50. You know, um, uh, you so, oh, sorry. Thank yeah, so. <laughs> we, we, we're we going to come back to this conversation, but we just want to introduce the Coxes. It's good to have you all on. Thank you all for joining the conversation. We we appreciate you. We appreciate your wisdom. Uh, let us know a little bit about you, then we'll continue this uh, communication conversation. Okay. Well, um, Elvira has been married to me for 40, uh, what, six years? 45. <laughs> well, we're, we're heading to 46. Um, I am from, uh, I don't know how, how the introductions took place. I'm, I'm, I'm from St. Vincent in the Caribbean. Okay. He is uh, from Panama. So there's a communication problem right there because we speak English, they speak Spanish. Oh. So, 
um, uh, two, two kids, well, two adults, um, one son who's in Europe and um, a daughter in Maryland and one granddaughter. And um, that's who we are. Okay. All right. Sister Cox, anything to add to, to uh, always, correct what he said? Always, always. <laughs> um, I am the reserved one in the relationship. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, like he said, we've been married 45 years, um, and it's been ups and downs. It has not been a rosy road, um, especially since this, we're talking about relationships here. Um, and I think it continues to evolve. It never, never stops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, let me also put it this way. Um, and Jennifer, you will, um, be in on this with me because uh, we came in on the topic of, um, communication. Now, here's the, my, the, the point I wanted to make in, um, Jennifer, in our in our line of business, by the way, um, I'm, I'm a lawyer, sister, um, sister before, and um, there are times when, um, as a judge, we have to a case may be headed towards trial, but we may determine that look, we may need to settle this matter. Now, if it goes to trial, there are certain rules of evidence. We know that there are certain things that cannot be said on the witness stand because somebody's going to object. As you start saying, well, the doctor told me that objection because hearsay. We have those rules. Now, there are times when we may look to settle the matter. So we say, let's go into chambers and talk. In that environment, there is a lot that cannot be said on the witness stand, which we are talking about because the idea now is to settle the matter, not try it. Now, when you are settling and we are behind closed doors, we can now say a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. that we don't say on the witness stand because mm -hmm. the intent here is to let's try and resolve it. Now, I see this parallel, or I see the parallel this way. There are times when we are looking to resolve an issue, and then we can sort of talk it out, just see if the intent on both sides is resolution, then we can openly just say some things. Let's just talk. In the end, we might get it resolved without a trial. And so I, I see that parallel in terms of uh, communication. It is what is the intent and the end result. Jennifer, can you bail me out on this? <laughs> bail him out, Jennifer. Bail him out. Okay. Because I suddenly feel as though I'm on trial somehow. <laughs> so, no, it's it's oh, not that okay. it's a trial. It's just that we our minds just think differently. And you know, a lot of times it, it goes back to how we argue maybe in public versus how we argue the minute the door shuts to the car, a minute we get in the house. Um, and it's just, it's just different. And I think like my mind, I'm going to argue based on the facts and he, he wants to argue based on what he thinks of the facts or, you know, fake news, but I'm <laughs> arguing based on exactly what happened and whatever was going on. So it, there's always this back and forth and you're trying to meet in the middle. So I think what you all are bringing up is very important and is very interesting in that uh, the differences come out a lot in communication as well, where just because you say something one way doesn't mean that I'm gonna receive it that way. Um, just because you intend to tell me um, something uh, lovingly doesn't mean that I hear it lovingly because I bring into the communication a history of other stuff. So sort of talk to talk to us about how that works for you all's relationship, about the differences that you all have that 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 bring it that that come up in the communication moment. Um, I'll, I'll start this off. Um, I think the one thing I've always had to be mindful of when I communicate is my tone. Um, and I think that's probably, <laughs> that's probably the thing that 
you know, it's it's usually if I get in trouble for anything, it's not what I said, it's the tone that I said it in. Trouble. Um, and so when I say trouble, I mean if, if she trouble. gets upset. So a grown she, man. <laughs> if she's upset, it's not it's it's probably I wasn't I wasn't I was wrong for saying it. It's probably just the tone I was saying. It. Mm. And so that's probably the, the thing that I'm always conscious of and I'm not perfect, you know, I'm still working, but like just being mindful of like what my tone is so that I'm not uh, um, being aggressive and I'm also not being condescending, you know, because, you know, I could say something that, you know, is, is right, but if I'm saying it in a condescending way, then clearly she's not going to receive it in the right way. Like for me, it's always been, and like, and we've, we've had these conversations when he'll say something and I'm like, okay, well, this is and he'll go well, and I'll and I'll respond to you. He goes, well, that's not what I meant. Okay, but you don't get to dictate how I interpret what you say. You are stuck with however I receive it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you don't like the way I receive it, then you need to change what you're saying. Mm. And he goes, well, you know what I meant? No, you you communicate for a living, so communicate what you're trying to say. Mm. Well, well <laughs> my my. my well, I want to go ahead. Yes, um, with me, um, with us, I usually have to repeat what I think I heard Kenny say said, and many times when I repeat it, he did. He said he didn't say that, but it came out of his mouth, and um, what ended up happening, I end up just having, you know, I just don't say anything. I just kind of just get really quiet because I don't like the escalation of his voice. He don't realize that the tone of his voice, like what, um, what Jay was saying, that really, um, really makes things even worse because he should know by now after 25 years, if I'm not saying anything, that means that, you know, you should just leave it alone if i walk away just don't keep bringing it up um because that even make things worse i think mm. you know once someone gets the silent treatment i think you really need to know that you should just leave it alone because a lot of times i say okay that's enough okay that's it okay you know let's just do something else um but he always want to just continuously um i guess wanted to be right and right is not always the best thing to do. And I think, you know, I, once Kenny really gets that part and after 25 years, he still don't have it yet that you don't have to be right. Mm. Well, uh, you know what? what Emma, I guess... Emma was trying to speak. The judge was trying to speak. We're going to let y'all cool but down it, over there and we're going to put Judge Cox up. Y'all cool down, man. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, Judge Cox. Sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I usually come from the perspective that I'm the easiest person to get along with. And anybody can get along with me, some, something's wrong with them. So, so it's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not to be a problem right there. But, but in terms of what you were saying, Rob, it's this, that I, for example, when I get upset, I, um, I, I become very, very quiet and I want to be left alone. Mm. Now, on the other hand, my um, companion, she is like a paper fire. She will blow up, and once she gets it off her chest, she can <laughs> laugh, laugh, laugh. And so it, it, it goes downhill from there because I want to be left <laughs> alone, and now she's okay. And yeah. she can just talk, talk, laugh, 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 and the, the quieter I get, and it's the more upset I get, and so it 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 poses a problem in right there in that context because you know, as I said, we we just we just approach a problem differently. It affects us differently. Hi, you wanted to say something? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, like you said, two very very <laughs> different personalities. Um, I forgive and forget very quickly. It's over. Well, you do? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> That's how 
how we've lasted 45 years. <laughs> but he, I, I think, I think, I, I pre preface with that, I think he holds on to things. Mm. Like you said, he's gotten quiet and he's thinking about it and he's mulling over it. And I've gone past it. I'm, I'm like on, on the next chapter, you know, and he's still reading the last pages of the last chapter. Mm. And I'm really, really over it. it. It's just different personalities. It's just the way we accept things differently. But, but what she's not saying is in the process, when she is in that conflagration mood, she would say some things that 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 hurt and hurt deeply. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Once it's off her chest, she is fine. Meantime, yeah. I have been deeply hurt by that statement. Mm. Mercy. And I am. That's why it's not that I'm holding on to it, but because it is. It it it's stuck so deep. It sunk so deep that I can't just let it go. In her case, she can let it go because she just got rid of it. Yeah. So so we, we're going to we, we're going to um, move on from uh, communication. Right. But I know that when me and Denise got married our, uh, and, and Marie asked a very good question about how we resolve these issues. I know when me and Denise got married, we realized that neither of us take very many things seriously. Like I'm not a serious person at all. Um, and so me and Denise, uh, I would frustrate her when she wanted to talk about something seriously. Um, because I'm like, okay, Akuna Matata, it's not that big of a deal. Um, we we needed to develop a mechanism. Denise, you talk about our mechanism to get us to communicate seriously. So when I am having an issue or I need to talk about something serious, my tone changes, but it's not condescending. It's not. Give them the tone, let them hear it. And you all, you all in Radio Land, tell me if this is. A different okay. Tone. The reason why it's considered different is because I'm silly, and so I'm not usually a very serious person. I'm very jovial. I'm very upbeat. I'm very whatever. So when I'm when it's time to talk, I'm going to talk to you like this. I need to ask you a question. I need to find out how we're feeling about da 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 da. If we can just have a conversation about X, Y, and Z, and that's how I talk to him. So he takes it as. He gets a little defensive, then he gets sillier, and then it's like, okay, you know what? I can't talk to you. And that frustrates me because I'm really trying to have a serious conversation. And so then he's making fun of it, making light of it, and I'm getting more and more enraged. So tell him how you resolved it so that people get solutions. How so you... what we do is... <laughs> You're going to tell him, tell him. So we had to come up with a code word. So when I say this word, or when he says this word, we know we're it's a serious conversation. Stop being silly. This is this is for real. The word I don't know why it came up with this word. He chose this word, but the, I didn't. the word is Santa. Yes, you did, like Santa Claus, Santa. So when I need to have a serious conversation, I say, okay, Santa, Santa, we having a Santa conversation. Yeah. And then we and then we both know this is really this is real talk. We need to sit down. Nobody's being silly. We need to both come to the conversation with understanding, um, knowing that something is brewing and something needs to be solved. Um, so that's our ridiculous word. It works for us though, because it takes away, I know that he's gonna be serious. He knows I'm gonna be serious and that there's no one's gonna feel a certain kind of way when the conversation's being had. And I usually use Santa in order to, uh, for sex. So I feel like if when I say Santa, then she feels like I'm connected and communicating and I'm interested in what she has to say, or I'm interested in the conversation. And then, you know, I, I can get sex, which leads us to intimacy. the next portion of intimacy and um, and connection. How do we stay connected to each other um, in this time? But anyway, anyone want to? Uh, anyone got anything left over for communication before we move on? Because I know people, and we got about we got about twenty minutes left, so I know people want to. People want solutions, and so anyone else got anything else? Well, I was just gonna say. Yeah, what what the so, so one of the solutions that I personally, I personally have is the fact that just to try to get you to understand the strengths and weaknesses of Lorraine, because we both have uh, different strengths and weaknesses, and. We're both very aggressive in, in, in matters, and I think she's, of course, uh, more aggressive with me if she doesn't get her way. Sometimes it it it, 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 it creates problems. So I try to uh, I try to slow down the pace because I try to remember as far as uh, what God would have us to be and do, and 
realize as the priest of the home, I have to try to settle and resolve things. So I try to come down and, and nothing is not that important uh, for the mess our relationship or to resolve our relationship. So we try to just break down and just try to get a better understanding. The strengths and weaknesses as we understand our weakness because I'm more patient than she is. She's not patient at all. Mercy. So I'll try to be more patient with the situation and try to resolve it. And uh, we it, it works. It really works because we eventually come together and then she starts hugging me and kissing me because of it. <laughs> Yeah, but Dr. So, Defoe, yeah. um, I just wanted to share something. I got a text. I have a text from someone who, um, when Kenny mentioned about, you know, we pray, you know, something about, they said, how do you, do you feel like praying when, no, I don't feel like praying at a time when I'm upset. I know mm -hmm. we've had situations and Kenny like, um, let's pray. This is early on. And I said, no, right now you need to go ahead and pray, you know, in the other room. And you know, I'll do my prayer. And so the person who's asking the question, yeah, at that particular time, sometimes you don't feel like praying together. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and um, that's how that thing with the prayer part of it. If yes. I'm really upset, you can't just immediately, you know, let's say, okay, let's let's start praying because I'm not I'm not really there right that particular point. Yeah. So Is what that right or wrong? I don't know, but that's just that's just me personally. I'm handling a person's question um, um, that asks a person um, the question from <laughs> that's listening on the live conference call. I got you. Yeah, that, that's a good, that's a good question, and we'll take some time. Maybe we'll maybe our next section we'll talk more about uh, conflict and and dealing with conflict and 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 and, and that idea that your prayers can be hindered if you and this is like real deep seated anger. This is real. This is not just like you know you pass gas and I'm upset, so I'm gonna go in the bathroom and you go. That's not. It's not talking about that. It's talking about um, categorical anger. So, so we'll talk about it, but, 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 but as we, as we move forward, like, what do you all think about keeping intimacy and your connection alive, especially during this time where you are in a, in a place together constantly? Um, I'll start. Okay. So I, I would say that it was, it's important to recognize what intimacy means to her versus what it means to me. Um, because I think the reality is when we first get married, you know, when men hear intimacy, we think sex. And I had to learn very early on that that's not really <laughs> what she means all the time when she hears intimacy. You know, it's everything else, you know, like sex is a, is a small part of it, um, but like intimacy is, you know, having an emotional connection with her. So. I understand what she needs, I understand what she desires um, from an emotional standpoint. So um, it is, I think part of our intimacy now is just, you know, connecting and being, getting through this emotionally and communicating. So we know like, how can we support each other through this time? Um, how can we support our kids? Cause they're, you know, they've had some struggles through these times and even our family and I think that is allowing us to connect. Um, and that's part of the int intimacy we have is being here like mentally um, with each other. I think for us, the big one is so. when we initially got married, we were both still in school. So from the beginning of our marriage, we've always been two ships passing in the night. Um, either I'm going to the library he's having to study or he's having to make lesson plans or I'm writing a brief. And then now, you know, I, it, before this all happened, you know, I'm the one that's usually home with the kids. He's back and forth to New York. So at the end of the day, it's, we're just, we're just done. And so it's been, now that he's been home, I'm still in and out because of my job. So it's, you know, finding those moments when we can just, okay, let's put the phones away because that's a big thing. Like I'm on my phone or I'm sending a text or I'm doing something and he's doing something on his phone. So we had to just find time to just put all that away and do something together um, just so that we have us time. Now our kids have determined that they don't want us to be together ever again. <laughs> so um, if they see us, you know, curled up, sitting together, they will find a way to implant themselves right in the middle of that. But 
for us, it has really been just just making to stop, just stop with all of the outside things. Um, we've done things with the kids like, okay, we're going to do a night with no TV. So let's go play some games. And, you know, we do things with them. And then it bringing with them is bringing us closer so that then once we're done with them, we can then have our time together with just us, no phones, no TV, no extra things, just talking about how are you doing and how are you feeling? Yeah. Um, Cox, does you all have anything to share? You know, interesting, to, me, interesting <laughs> to me. Okay. I, I was just thinking when Rob was speaking that, you know, he said that, that, that men, intimacy <laughs> means sex, and uh, or at least leads to, and I was going to say to him, <laughs> one day, my friend, you're going to be 73 years old. So, you know, kind of <laughs> think of some other ways of intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Moving right along, <laughs> no, no, but no, no, but but that's a reality. That that's that that that's so. Talk to us a little bit about that because, of course, <laughs> after 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 a while, um, you know, uh, you have to have something other than passion. You have to have friendship. You have to have uh, genuine uh, excitement with each other. So, talk to us a little bit about that, uh, if you don't mind, brother. <laughs> 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 well, let's, let's, let's put it this way. I, I remember writing on Facebook once that he was my Sydney Poitier. Um, when, I mar when, when we just started going out together, I loved listening to his voice. Mm. And his I voice used to be a broadcaster when I was young, by the way. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I loved listening to his voice. And the voice doesn't go. <laughs> <laughs> It continues after 40 something years. Okay. So you still got it, man. Okay. <laughs> hey, Elder Watkins, I heard you trying to chime in. If you did you have something, Elder Watkins? Oh yeah, yeah. Intimacy, of course, to me, it's always been sex. Uh, it's always been, you know, it's been sex. But again, at learning to uh, again about the talents and gifts of, of your, you know, to Lorraine is, you know, rubbing her back, rubbing her leg. Uh, is doing the things that she likes, you know. It's it's uh, uh oh, we lost him. You know, is you know not leaving the bottle of water empty in the refrigerator. You know, it's those little things that bring us closer for her. And you have to, I had to learn those things because and still learning because again, she wants that. I'm mean, she's touchy feely. I'm not. You know, I'm not a touchy feeling person. I'm not the person that's gonna hold your hand and hug you sitting by the chair. That's just not my not me. But I have to get try to get better at it, and that's the industry to her and just being closer. Having that touch, having that feel, and so learning that is important. And again, as as a man, it, for me, it's the learning process, and I'm getting better at it, but I still have a long way to go. Yes, gotcha. Gotcha. and I, I just want to also gotcha. agree with what Kenny is sharing, um, because for men, it's sex. We get it, but there's a lot that happens before that happens. Yeah, and okay. it just don't start there. It yeah, starts with it starts. you know communicating. Yeah. And doing all those things and you know like Kenny now has developed over the past maybe five ten years you know he brings breakfast in bed um at lunch sometimes I, i'm at the desk and there's yep. lunch there so those are all the preparation things so i setting know what up. what he's leading up to yeah setting it up and setting it up is good uh, and i do a good job setting it up though I do. yeah he do a really good <laughs> job setting it up I and i say kissing up is always good it works great so he's, he's doing better <laughs> All right, Denise, you wanna you wanna talk? <laughs> okay, these are my numbers. Okay, these are my we interim are live. numbers. I'm not gonna be embarrassed. Okay, good. All right. They, I okay. was just gonna agree. You know, I think that this quarantine has forced us to be more intimate as far as just connection and um, not necessarily sex, but just like the the connection of just being together because you know both of our your job requires you to be on the road a lot, and so now we're kind of put together. Um, and it, it's forcing more closeness, more conversation, and I like it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actually loving it. I and know, I am too. Yeah, I don't know how, 
But why? Me either. But because I kind of got used working. to you being gone a lot, and so now that you're here, I mean, not not like that. Now people gonna know they can come rob the house or something. <laughs> oh. All right. So so um, just give us some give us some um, give us some tips uh, in these next ten minutes that we got, and, and then if you are online, if you're viewing and you have questions for some of the panelists, just type those questions in. We'll see if we can run through some of them real quick. If you all could just share just uh, some words of wisdom for those people who maybe are quarantined together. Um, and uh, they want to uh, get some uh, useful tools for uh, their marriage. Like, what would you suggest for them um, during this quarantining time? Any wisdom? Well, I, if I had to say something, I would say, um, especially to us guys, you know, don't bring your work attitudes home. Let me put it this way. This, it is um, determined that police officers, for example, they are used to being, um, let's say, out there in the public where their word is law. And, you know, you say, stop, they st the person stops. You put, you put them on the blinking light, the, the person pulls aside. They are used to be being um, obeyed immediately. Um, in, if I may use myself as an example, uh, when I was in my previous position as clerk of the appellate division, I was the head of the, the entire office. And if I wanted a file, there was somebody who was happy to bring me the file. If I needed something typed, well, my secretary was so very accommodating. And even now in my present context, you know, as a judge, I said, okay, I said to the attorney, stand or I say be quiet <laughs> and I have to be careful that when I come home because if I am in a situation where I feel I'm being talked down to I'm thinking I've got attorneys over there who are got to listen to what I have to say and then she's just talking down to me and then you've got to be kidding <laughs> you know so so we have to be sure that we don't bring that sort of air that you are used to in the work environment and expect that the person at home is going to respond the same manner. Mm, that's very good. Yeah. All right. Who, who else? Any, anyone else? Any other? Anyone else got anything to share to the couples at home? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I would like to share. Yes, what I would like to say is um, every when everything changed for me personally is when um, Kenny was diagnosed with terminal uh, throat cancer, stage four, 10 mm. and my whole perspective, everything changed instantly. And I thought to myself, I'm like, wow, you wasted all this time being mad and arguing and all of that. And, you know, he might not make it. And I just changed instantaneously on how I was and being angry all the time and just started making every day special. And it's not, you don't have to wait for something so tragic to happen for you to change because we know that divorce is not an option, but death is not an option either, but anyone could be taken away at any given time. So I just started appreciating more and stop being kind of selfish sometimes and just kind of listening a little bit more and not taking everything so personal. And that truly made a difference in our relationship and it started bringing us together. So based on times like this with quarantine, we come together and try to find different creative ways to bring the family together. Like we'll get together with our children at night and talk and play games with them. So it's helping us bring the family together, bringing us together. And of course, Lorraine had children, I had children, they're all our family. So we pull them all together, we do things together, we talk with together and we create games and fun together and we talk about things and pray together. So that's helped us not only bring us together, but all the family together at the same time we're doing this quarantine time. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anyone I think, else? I think one good thing is just take a breath. Um, sometimes, especially when we're in such course, close corners all of the time, it's enough to drive you crazy. But it's just taking that breath. I know the first couple of weeks, you know, and one day 
he's trying to do a conference call. I'm trying to do a conference call. My daughter's trying to do something and everyone's trying to do their thing, but no one is worried about the other people in the area and the environment. So before you, before you snap, before you get mad and want to start raging off about, well, how come you don't respect me? Okay. Well, are you respecting them too? We're all in this together. We are all in lockdown together. And it's just about just find patience. And, and, you know, patience has never been my strong suit. And it's some, it's something that I'm definitely working on, but it's something that you just, it, it's, I've learned that some things aren't just worth, they're just not worth arguing about. So, you know, we found creative ways when we all have to be on at the same time. So he'll come to the basement, Elizabeth will be at the table, and I've been doing conference calls from the car because that's the only place I could get a quiet place to do a conference call. Yeah. But it's just, it's, it's, you have to, you just, you, we got to be patient with each other right now because no, it's no one's fault, but we're all in this together. And so because we're in it together, we got to find a way to work together. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll also add that um, in this time, it's super important to have some balance in your life. Um, you know, I think one of the things I realized through this process was that I was heavy on work, 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 work. And like, you know, I had family time, but it was like not, always like as structured or not always as balanced mm -hmm. and this has really taught me like you know being here i even told told her the other day that like when this is over i gotta find more time to spend even more time with the kids because i'm like i love the fact that i get all kinds of time that i'm getting now i don't even remember my dad having this kind of time with me because he was always working you know so i was like having this time with the with the kids is is is, is great. And I'm like, they're never going to forget this. You know, um, I'm not going to forget this, obviously. But, um, you know, it's it's taught me to realize that the balance that I need to have between work and family is super important. And to appreciate that and to, to work towards having a better home life balance. Yeah. 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 Any, anything for you, Denise? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Um, just making sure that the lines of communication are open. Denise doesn't know that I've been doing this, but um, whenever I have a fight pick, and you know, sometimes I pick fights because you need to keep it spicy. But um, uh, sometimes when I have fights to pick or when I have something to discuss, or if something perturbs me, I say to myself, am I gonna care about this in five minutes? And because I'm stuck in here, am I gonna care about this in five hours? And because I can't go anywhere, Am I, am I going to care about this in five days? Because I'm still going to be here. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> and if I discover that I'm not going to care about this in five minutes, I'm not going to care about this in five five hours, I'm not going to care about this in five days. So I've been more pleasant, haven't I? That's because things ain't worrying me. Because <laughs> I got to be yeah, in here. Yeah, yeah. And I ain't got nowhere to escape or run away from. <laughs> but those are, just, those are just ideas. Whatever you can think of as couples um, uh, creatively for yourself, just make sure that you you, you try you, you try to do that. Right? Uh, Pastor, another one I've learned mm -hmm. is if I write it down instead of just let just saying it, because everyone that knows me knows that um, my filter can sometimes be non-existent. Mercy. So if I write it down, then <laughs> I will go back and I'll keep going back and changing things, and then I'll go, ooh, maybe I shouldn't say it that way, and it will it'll kind of soften what I was going to say to him. So when I've been upset with him, he's like, well, what's wrong? Let's talk about it. And, and brother Cox, uh, sister Cox, Rob and I are the same, just opposite. I'm the one that's like, leave me alone. And he wants to talk about it in Kumbaya. Then, you know, I'm like, don't talk to me right now. And he's finally learned to just leave me alone. And when I'm ready to talk about it, I'll send him a text. This is what's wrong. And then we can discuss it because if I say it in that moment, it's not going to be nice. So, but I've learned that if I just can write it down, write my thoughts out and then kind of cipher through them, I can take out the emotion and focus on the actual issue. Mercy. And while we're talking about these reflective moments, what has been happening to me, I've been looking a lot at MSNBC and the past couple of nights, they would focus on somebody who has passed away as a result of this event. 
Yeah. And the other night, they focused on about five people, the youngest being a 25-year-old vibrant woman. But every one of the persons featured in that in that segment was younger than I is was younger than I am, mm. and it made me think about something. I said, "Why is it that the Lord has spared me to be this much older than they?" And they went, and I have been reflecting very seriously upon that. Why? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's I think that's very powerful, and um, I, I wanna I wanna thank all of you for coming on and sharing your wisdom, uh, sharing details about your marriages, your relationships, and uh, 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 Kenny Lorraine, do you all have anything to share uh, from our from our relationship ministries department before uh, we head offline? Uh, for those that are still watching, we may have time for one more question if you throw it in really quickly. Um, but anything to share in, in uh, before we before we come off the line and before we pray, Doctor Defoe. Before we share, um, I have a question um, mm -hmm. from someone from the conference call, and they want to know how do you handle when you're upset and you have to be in church, and then your spouse is nice and happy to everyone that's at church and you just finished having a blow up and they didn't even kiss you but they're hugging all the people in the church um how, how about when you, you have to, yeah you know, i heard that was a that was a, a pause uh, how about when you have to you have to preach and um <laughs> no, but that's not really happened too often to us. No, yeah. honestly, no. Yeah, but but how do you do it? Listen, that's that's one of the that's one of the reasons that First uh, Peter three seven talked about um, resolving conflict with your spouse so your prayers aren't hindered. How can one say that they love God and can be in communion with God, and you can't be in communion with the person that you've taken vows before God with? Um, God sees the marital relationship as being one. Um, and so if, 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 if we view the oneness of marriage as the reflection of God on the earth, it's almost as if I'm going into my prayer closet and praying to God and God is like, hold on, there's, there's not both of you here. What's going on? There's something missing because now I see a unification of two becoming one. In, in God's eyes. And so I, I think it's very important for us to realize that um, we do we do we do get upset with the people that we're married with because that's just normal. Human relationships, uh, two people are different. Um, you know, the conflict always is, it arises. It's not a matter about the conflict. It's how we resolve the conflict. It's how we humble ourselves. It's how um, we, we, we become compassionate, how we become understanding. And then it's also the, the, the person who is the one that's supposed to be stronger spiritually. Um, uh, why is it that I can't be the one to make the first apology, to make the move toward reconciliation. This is where um, this is where the priesthood for specifically uh, the man comes in. And it's I know we joke around a lot that says men are always to blame. We always just say sorry, blah, blah, blah. We get it. We know. But the truth of the matter is we are responsible for the peace in the home. We're responsible for the environment that is set in the home. And so if there's conflict in the home, then maybe we could be the first to come and say, you know what, my bad. And I've done this, man. You know what, my bad. You know, I, I messed that up. Even when it's not my fault. <laughs> well, yeah. um, let me ask this to Pastor um, and, and to... Okay, um, here's... Is it possible... Another also, question, Dr. Paul. What if your spouse... Okay. What if your what if your spouse has? I'm sorry. Who is on? Yeah, Dr. Cox. Yeah, yeah. Go, go on, Dr. Cox. Go on. Okay. Uh, no, I was just going to say, uh, ask um, if it would help to simply ask the other person, ask the husband, how can you be so cordial to those others and you're so hostile to me? What, what qualities do they possess that I don't have? 
that makes you so readily accessible to them and not to me? Maybe such a such a, 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 a an internal question might lead to you know sort of understanding of each other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, Lorraine, did you want to jump in with the last question that you had? Yes, um, a caller wants to know what. Yeah, um, Lorraine, we can't, we can't, we can't understand your question. Do me a favor, type the question in the private chat box, and we'll we'll get it answered. All right. So what 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 I want to do is I, I wanna I wanna um I wanna thank you all for for coming on and for engaging with us in this conversation, okay. and um, we'll do our best to to maybe. If uh, if the relationship ministries department uh, wants to, we'll do our best to get some other different couples on and to expand the conversation. Um, I, I think that would that would go over well. Um, and then we want to thank definitely all of you that came on to view. And right before we go, I just want to throw out this invitation for you all to join us tomorrow uh, as we continue our encounters with Jesus series. We have. A very good friend of mine, Pastor Noah Washington, um, as well as uh, Sister Sister uh, Tamara is coming to sing. But a, a good friend of mine, Pastor Noah Washington, is continuing our series tomorrow, Encounters with Jesus, uh, right here on Facebook, on YouTube Live. Uh, you can by all means join us for worship service uh, next week. This week, sorry, we'll be glad to have you. Um, really quick. Uh, I see here, can we talk a little bit more about forgiveness? Sometimes we blow up in a new argument due to past hurtful comments. Um, uh, anyone wanna tackle this real quick about this idea about uh, forgiveness? How do, we, how, do we, how do we forgive our spouses? Um, well, I'll say the first thing with forgiveness is to ask God to help you to forgive. You know, it, forgiveness comes from God, um, and it's not something that we do naturally. It, it has to be something that you pray about um, yourself. Um, so no matter what the issue is, whether it's, um, you know, things from the past like infidelity or any anything of that nature, you know, and only God can help you forgive. So at the end of the day, like, you have to not only... Uh, pray to God to to um, to for for forgiveness, but to give you the spirit of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's something super important. I think sometimes people don't realize that, like like saying it, but actually believing it and really truly, um, you know, feeling that way is 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 two different things. Because I can say I forgive you. But if I am still in the back of my mind, still thinking about that same mm -hmm. thing every time we have an argument, yeah. then truly I haven't really forgiven. You know, so it has to be at the point where I'm not only, you know, forgiven you, but I've now erased it, you know, from my mind so that when we do continue to communicate, it is not coming back up in my mind to then be like a spear towards you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We often hold people hostage to things that they've done in the past, and we have to figure out a way to move forward um, and allow that apology to be an apology, if it's a genuine apology, and allow um, almost a clean slate and just say, you know what, you're right. I, okay, I forgive you, and allow that that apology and that forgiveness to to settle. And, and well, move with on. that apology and forgiveness, there also has to be communication so mm -hmm. the person knows what they're what they're apologizing Correct. for. Because a blanket apology does right. nothing. Correct. And and then because and then if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, yeah, it's going to keep coming back up in the argument mm -hmm. because it's never been addressed. Right. So if there's something other that you specifically need to forgive, yes, you need to pray for that spirit of forgiveness. But you also need to communicate what it is that you can't let go of so that the other person um, can get to a point where they also start to work on trying not to do that thing that is causing you that pain. Yeah, I, I just want to I just want to put this up real quick. The foundations of an apology. Listen, 
I'm sorry, this is what I did. I'm sorry for doing this and then action. I am going to do this in order to ensure that it doesn't happen again. So I make an apology, I express accountability, I then take action. But we have a lot of stuff that we can talk about uh, going forward or later on. And so I just want to I just want to close this out. Lorraine, you want to close us out? And then Elder Watkins, you want to pray for us um, as we close? Um, and then, like I said, you can join us for worship tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. Okay, yes, um, Dr. Defoe and Denise, it's great um, seeing you and having you join us um, tonight. It was it was really um, interesting. And also we have a lot of individuals who are really excited to finally meet you. Um, so um, the quarantine was good because at least we got a chance to actually be with you in a really important time when we're talking about couples and patients and and also just want to mention that we have some other things coming up, relationship ministry. We have a great, great team. The other part of this couple's ministry team um, is Lori and also Mike Williams. And next Saturday evening, next Sabbath afternoon at 4 p.m., we also are having a man up. So all of our men, men's ministry is having a man up um, seminar with Dr. Defoe. So invite all of the husbands and young guys and your neighbors and um we're just excited about a lot of things that are taking place and for our couples we're planning um a date night um while we're in quarantine and we'll get more information out to you and we want to challenge everyone to pick up the book love dear love dear by the hendrick the kendrick brothers and that's a really great um exercise to actually be planning while you um you know under quarantine and it's love of Dear, D-A-R-E. It's a great book. It's an assignment for both the husband and the wife. And um, just want to encourage you and also keep in touch with us because we have a lot of things um, going on. We just want to thank all of our um, callers who called in and also so on YouTube and certainly on Facebook. Back over to you, Dr. Defoe. Okay. We're going to close out with prayer this evening. And again, uh, it's so important. This has been very insightful. We've had an awesome time and it's nothing like marriage and staying together. Let's bow our heads. Most an awesome Father, we thank you and praise you this evening for bringing us together, a ministry of life, a ministry of help, a ministry of saving souls, and we've just been blessed in so many ways. We have so many individuals that have joined us from across the country, from across the world. They want to stick, stay with their marriage. They want to be a part of their marriage. They want to be a part of you. So Lord, come down and be with us this evening. Bless us as we continue to stay in our marriage, that we, well, there are no exceptions of what we can do. We can do all things to you, but without you, Nothing can be done, but with you, all things are possible. So break the change that so many couples are having, Lord. Instill in them the faith, the trust, the understanding, the communication that we can have with each other. And we build strong, steady, faithful marriage to live for you. So bless us as we close. Continue to be with Pastor Defoe and his wife in a very special way. Continue being all the couples that have joined us, all the men and women. Bless us. Be with us and strengthen us. Give us more wisdom and guidance that we will stay together to be with you. For Jesus' sake we say, amen. 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 amen.